Today we are starting to learn about telling time and clocks. So we're going to start topic 13 today. Um, we are going to look at some vocabulary words, some words that we need to know about telling time and clocks. The first one that comes up is o'clock. This little hook here is an apostrophe. We've used that before when we're making contractions, when we put two little words together to make one single word. In this case, it is part of this word, o'clock. We use it when we are saying the hour, when the time is on the hour. So it is eight o'clock. When the minute hand points to the 12 and the hour hand points to a number, we say o'clock. Our next word is minute. Each of these little lines on a clock stands for one minute. When we're looking at a digital clock, the two numbers at the end are the minutes. There are 60 minutes in one hour. There are 60 seconds in one minute. So if you count to 60, uh, usually if you're keeping the same pace, you will know that a minute has gone by. Um, sometimes a minute is about the time it takes to do two commercials when you're watching a television show. Minute hand. The minute hand is the long hand on a clock. So when you are looking at a clock like this, the hand that is longer is the minute hand. It shows how many minutes have gone by in that hour. In this clock, 30 minutes have gone by. Hour hand. The short hand is the hour hand. So this shorter hand here is the hour hand. It points to a number or close to a number that shows what hour it is. Hour. An hour is 60 minutes. Schedule. This chart here shows us a schedule for the library. It tells us the time on this side and the activity or what's happening at the library on this side. A schedule is the list that shows what time events happen. So at 1.30, it's story time. 2 o'clock, crafts. 3 o'clock, art class. 4.30, closing time. We have a schedule in our classroom that tells when we do different things during the school day. Half hour. A half hour is 30 minutes. That means um, that half of the hour has gone by. If a full hour is 60 minutes, half of that is 30 minutes. Okay, so let's do our um, story here for our topic opener. You just need to listen and watch. Parade time. Written by Bert Wiseman. Illustrated by Mike Moran. The hour hand is on the... It's o'clock. It's time to put on my hat. Okay, so what we need to do is look in the background of this picture here at the clock. It says the hour hand is on the blank. Now, if you remember from the words we just learned, we heard that the hour hand was the longer hand or the bigger one. So this one is pointing to the, I'm sorry, the minute hand is the longer one. That's pointing to the 12. The hour hand is the shorter hand. This one is pointing to the eight. So that means that the hour is eight and zero minutes have gone by. That is when we say o'clock. The hour hand is on the eight. It is eight. Eight o'clock. Eight, eight. The hour hand is on the. It's o'clock. It's time to grab my horn. Okay, so it doesn't show us here, but this hour hand or this minute hand has gone all the way around the clock and is back up to 12 again. That means we're saying o'clock for the minutes. The hour hand, the shorter one, has moved from the 8. Now it is pointing to the number 9 on the clock. So it would say the hour hand is on the 9. It is 9 o'clock. 
Nine? Nine? The hour hand is on the... It's o'clock. It's time to meet the band. Okay, look at the clock in the background. Once again, the minute hand is pointing to the 12, so we say o'clock. The hour hand now is pointing to the 11. So we would say the hour hand is on the 11. It's 11 o'clock. 11, 11. The hour hand is on the, it's o'clock. It's time to start the parade. So here we have the minute hand pointing to the 12, so we say o'clock. The hour hand, the shorter one, is pointing to the 2. So we would say the hour hand is on the 2. It's 2 o'clock. 2? 2? Let's um, take a quick look at our math paper. Okay, so you should have your first paper for time. Um, when we open it flat on our desk we can, or on our workspace, we can see the words we are learning. Our hand, that's the short hand. It's pointing to the four in this picture, so it is four o'clock. Minute hand is the longer hand. This one is pointing to the six, so we know that 30 minutes have gone by. And schedule, a list that shows what times different things happen. Um, on this side it are some jobs that you can do. It says circle the event that takes more time. So let's take a quick look at what they're doing here. This person is baking cookies and this person is writing their name. Which one would take longer? You should be circling baking cookies. Baking cookies takes longer than writing your name. You have to mix all the ingredients, put them in the pan, put the pan in the oven, wait for it to be done cooking, take them off the pan, let them cool. So there's more time than simply writing your name. Number two, circle the event that takes less time. So which one is faster? Washing your hands? Or I'm not sure what they're doing there. Maybe they're going to make a sandcastle or collect some shells. Which one would be faster to do? Probably washing your hands, okay? Even though we want to take time washing our hands to get all the germs off of it, um, it probably still won't take as long as walking around on the beach and collecting shells or making a sandcastle. And down at the bottom, fill in the missing numbers in the pattern. They are skip counting by fives. So zero, five, 10, 15. I wanna start at 15 and go up five more numbers. So I'm gonna count on 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's five more, so I'm gonna write a 20, or you're gonna write a 20 on the line. Two comes first, then the zero for 20. After that, five more gets us to 25, and we want to skip up five more numbers. So if I'm at 25 and I count on 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So on this line, we're going to write three zero for 30. Okay, on the back of this paper is a game um, for you to play. I'm just going to flip it around like this. It has directions on there. You can probably play with somebody at your house. Um, if you don't have the counters and things that they show you at the bottom, you can use pennies, you can use uh, Legos, you can use any little things that you have around your house. All right, so that might be something fun to do to get started with telling time. And we are going to do one more thing today, which is watch a brain pop that's going to tell us about some parts of a clock here. Parts of a clock.
What you reading? You can't actually read a clock, Moby. Well, a clock doesn't tell you much of a story. It tells you the time. A clock doesn't actually talk. It just, well, what is a clock? I know that a clock is a tool that we use to measure time, just like we use tools to measure height. All clocks measure the same time, even if they look really different. This is the type of clock we have in our classroom. And I have my own clock in my bedroom. And there's a clock in our living room. Oh yeah, and Grandpa has a clock on his arm. A watch. Hmm. I guess clocks can tell time in different ways. Well, Grandpa's watch is digital, and the time is written out in numbers. And Mr. Patchouli says the clock in our classroom is analog. You have to figure out the time by looking at the face. What is the face of a clock? The face of a clock is the part with the numbers on it. Like on this clock, the face is the white part. There are 12 numbers that go around the face of a clock. Just like they're 12 inches on a ruler or 12 months in a year. The 12 is always on the top and the six is always on the bottom. Hmm. But the face and numbers don't tell time by themselves. What do the hands on the clock do? The hands are the part of the clock that point to the numbers. I know they aren't really hands. That's just what they're called. The little hand is called the hour hand because it shows the hour. And the big hand is called the minute hand because it shows the minutes. While the minute hand goes all the way around the clock, the hour hand moves from one number to the next. So the hour hand moves slower than the minute hand. And the hands always move in one direction. It's called clockwise. No, the hands never go backwards. That's called counterclockwise. <clears throat> but check it out, Moby. There are clocks everywhere. I guess people need clocks to know the time. But why is time so important? Every morning my alarm clock wakes me up for school. <coughs> Come on, Moby, it's time to wake up. We don't want to be late. I know the bus comes at eight o'clock. So we have to make sure we're at the bus stop before it comes. I guess time is important because we use it to plan the day. Moby, it's not time for lunch yet. There are a lot of times to remember. Like, our school starts at 8.30. Oh, and we have music at 2 o'clock. And I know the most important time of all. Free time. Okay, so think about some clocks that are in your house. Maybe if you want to walk around, um, take a little field trip around your house and look at for clocks anywhere you might see them. Um, think about the different times that you need to know what time it is. Maybe what time your favorite TV show comes on or what time you have to do your schoolwork at home or what time uh, mom or dad gets home from work or makes you your food or your snacks what time you have to go to bed at night, um, and we will be working more with time over the next few days.